What's going on Dolph fans? It is your boy Dylan and I am here to do my preview video for the Miami Dolphins versus Houston Texans. That is obviously this Sunday. Uh, we play in Hard Rock Stadium. We then actually have a quick turnaround because then we play the Ravens in Hard Rock Stadium on Thursday night. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First we have to battle these 1-7 Texans. Uh, and let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Going to start off with the injury report. There are some things that need to be talked about here. Uh, so first of all, let's just note that Devontae Parker actually was put onto injured reserve today. Because uh, apparently in practice he re-aggravated his hamstring. And... Um, so he is going to be out for at least the next three weeks on injured reserve. So I don't know why they didn't update Fridays again. They're like, you know, the same thing last week. They were really lagging with their updates for Friday. Uh, so they don't have it here. But Devontae Parker is actually officially now on injured reserve with his hamstring injury. Uh, the rest of the guys, though, I believe everybody uh like you know Tua and Jerome Baker Brandon Jones these guys were all limited and they were still limited Friday if I'm not mistaken but they are expecting to have these guys play although um I saw somewhere I don't remember where it is exactly but I saw somewhere that the the report is is that Tua will be hopeful to play but it's not a guarantee, so we'll see. Uh, oh, because, by the way, yeah, and left finger, it's not just his ribs, but apparently he injured his throwing hand uh, at some point. So uh, one of the fingers on his throwing hand, on his left hand. So uh, that's why he is, you know, he. and I don't know what his designation is because they didn't put it, but he could be listed as questionable I do think, though, that most of these guys should be good to go. Uh, Mance and Phillips were, are expected to be good to go. By the way, Fuller and Dieter are still not ready to come off injured reserve, so they still remain on injured reserve. Uh, but Mance and Phillips should be good to go. I would think... Uh, I, I don't know about Baker and Tua. Both of those guys could ultimately have questionable designations, and I think Brandon Jones is probably good to go. Let's take a look at the Texans. So first, we'll look at the guys that are out. We have tight end Farrell Brown. That's a pretty big deal. Linebacker Christian Kirksey. Obviously, Deshaun Watson, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, no kidding. And then Hardy Nickerson are the guys that are listed as out with um, everybody else not having not having a designation. You have Jonathan Greenard, Brevin Jordan, um, Justin McRae, Jacob Martin, Chris Conley, Rex Burkhead, uh, Kevin Pierre, Lewis, uh, let's see, Brandon Cooks, and Danny Amendola. But all the rest of those people should be ready to go. So aside from, you know, Farrell Brown, Christian Kirksey, and... Hardy Nickerson, we don't really care. And also, though, the thing is about this game is is it just so happens that Tyrod Taylor is back, and so he will be making his first start of the season since coming off of his injury. Um, so Davis Mills will not be playing in this game. We are going up against Tyrod Taylor. All right, and so with that, now is time to go ahead and swap over to my game preview template here. Uh, and so before I get into this, let me just start off by saying that obviously, look, this is a young for the most part, young, inexperienced, rebuilding Texans team with a lot of problems. That's obviously minus the Deshaun Watson thing. Um, uh, they're, in, you know, obviously in rebuild because, you know, Deshaun Watson is not going to be, you know, a Texan for too much longer one way or the other. Um, and so, you know, and obviously they have a lot of issues. They've reset, you know, in the 
front office and, and so on and so forth and a coaching. So there's a lot of issues going on. They're, you know, they're in the very beginnings of a rebuild and there's no reason why we should lose to the Texans. Um, you know, and especially as we start going through these league standings and so on and so forth, you will see that there's even more reason to suggest that the Dolphins should be able to win this game. They better win this game, though, because if they don't win this game, then you really do hit the, the bottom of the barrel. Obviously, you would drop to 1-8. and eight. You would likely then end up being 1-9 and nine because you, you could pretty much write that in stone because then we have to do a short turnaround to go play the Ravens on Thursday night, right? By the way, I'll be doing my preview video for that game then on Wednesday because of the quick turnaround. But so... Um, but yeah, so you can't lose this game. And if you do lose this game, then like I said, you're in the bottom of the barrel. I, I mean, you could pretty much just ride off the locker room. These guys are like at that point, I can't imagine hardly any of them are actually going to be playing hard, you know, at that point. And um, it just it's not good, bro, because then like, I don't know. For me personally, I just don't know how I could have trust or faith in predicting a win from that point and if you lose to the texans you could very well end up losing the remaining games on the season because you then go baltimore that's pretty much a guaranteed loss then maybe you could win against the jets but who knows then carolina and the giants so you have three potentially winnable games but with the way things are developing uh then you got the jets after the bye again a winnable game but then new orleans and tennessee probably not and then finish the the the, uh, the season out at New England or versus New England rather. I don't know. Anyway, let's not get too ahead too ahead of ourselves. It's just I feel like this game is a bit of a crossroads at this point. I mean, the season's obviously already lost. We're you know playing to see the development of or we're watching to see the development of players and you know stuff like that. Whatever, who's gonna be around next year? But. Um, you know, we would like to be able to still maybe see some wins, right? Like, I predicted 6-11 and 11 prior to the preseason. Yeah, I gave him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. Obviously, it was over generous, and I should have stuck with my original prediction because that's obviously a lot closer to reality and, you know, whatever. But, I, hey, I gave him a chance. I bumped him up to nine wins right before the season started, and... It looks like I it is going to be a lot closer to my original 6 and 11 prediction. The problem is as it could actually even be worse than that and I I hope it's not. So they need to win this game. They at least need to get to fucking 6 wins, man. And they can. They got Houston, New York twice, uh the Giants, and then if you can get either a win against Carolina or New England, there you go, you can get to 6 wins. All right. So let's get to the back to this cuz kind of, you know, uh, added some things in there. I'm just, I'm trying not to look ahead, but it's kind of hard, man. It's like, honestly, we, we really probably should be looking ahead to the draft. The problem with that is, is we don't even have our draft pick. So it's currently at like third overall, but the Eagles have it. And so then we got to hope that the, the 49ers lose. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous situation to be in. And but here we are, bro. Like here we are. I'm not surprised cuz again, I you know, I I saw all this shit coming or you know, most of it. Obviously, I can't predict everything or super specifically, but I've been detailing the issues with this team, with this roster, with Brian Flores, with the the front office and organization that everybody's now seeing, you know, and for and, after a benefit of three years of fucking evidence, even though I was able to identify it early on. Anyway, it just it's it's just frustrating. It's frustrating to be in this situation because even like I've said, even though I've seen it come in, you know, and I'm not surprised and I'm not completely like shattered by it. My whole world hasn't like imploded, you know, because I was prepared for it. It still fucking sucks. All right. Anyway. 
Let me take a breather. Let me digress a little bit here and let me get back to this. So it is a bottom or it is a bottom. It is a battle between two bottom teams in the league. Obviously, I think as it stands right now, we are currently third on the draft order. But the only and the only two teams that are currently ahead of us are obviously the Lions, who are 0 and 8. And then the Texans, who are currently 1 and 7. But if we win, or, and depending on what happens in this game, um, if we ended up losing, well, then we would take pretty firm control over the number second spot, uh, at least for now. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Because I, God damn it, I swear to God, if we end up giving the Eagles a fucking first overall pick, if it's a f top five overall pick, that's going to be bad enough. But if we give the Eagles the first overall pick because the Lions end up winning, you know, some games, more games than us. And we have the, I mean, Jesus Christ, like how fucking terrible could, and especially too, if the, if the uh, 49ers then end up winning enough games to at least make it to like, you know, mid to late teens, or even if they squeak into the playoffs as a wild card and, you know, it goes into the twenties, Jesus Christ. I mean, how much worse could it possibly get? Like, all right, again, let me digress. So. Two one and seven teams going into this. Obviously, Dolphins, Texans, both on seven game losing streaks. We both won in week one, so it's going to be a battle of two bottom teams. Which one can come out on top, and which which one can break their losing streak? So let's take a look at some of these league rankings as it stands. Offensively, the Dolphins have to a total of two thousand four hundred and fifteen yards on the season. The Texans have 2,249. They are 20, we are 27th in the league. They are 30th. So we do have a little bit of a head-to-head -head matchup battle win there. Obviously, it's not by much. It's only by three spots. And, you know, we're still 27th in the league. Now, per game average, we have 301.9, which is 30th. They have 281.1, which is 31st. So obviously not much of a difference. We have a slight edge there. When it comes to passing, we have 1,923 on the season. They have 1,773. We're 21st. They're 29th. So a, a decent little bit, a decent bit of spread there. Um, and we obviously have the edge, but you know, again, we're still not a very good team. So. And this team has just shown over the first eight weeks of the season, whether it be coaching decisions or whatever, or undisciplined football, they just continuously find ways to shoot themselves in the foot and lose games. And again, that's why I said, if we lose against the Texans, um, I, I just can't have confidence that they can beat anybody at that point. Also, by the way, again, just real quick, Tua, it would be, man, I hope he does play. But especially with the hand injury, if he, for some reason, if he doesn't play, and it would likely be because of that, then that means we're going to have to watch Jacoby Brissett. So he's going to have to come back into the lineup, and um, which means the offense is going to be less efficient and less effective. And then Tyrod Taylor is going to be coming in for them, which probably means they're going to be more efficient and more effective. So... I mean, like, I hope Tua plays, bro, because it's just going to be a fucking, it's just going to be a goddamn clown show if that's the case, bro. Like, and like, even thinking about it right now, I'm like laughing. I'm, I'm like almost on the verge of laughing about it because it's like, I can already feel the dread from that game and what would come from it. And oh boy. Okay. Anyway, hopefully Tua plays. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Passing yards per game, we're at 240.4. They're at 221.6. We are 25th in the league. They are 30th. So, again, we do have an edge there, but obviously not by much. Rushing, we have 629 on the season. They have 609. So, we're off by 20 yards there. But that has us at 27th, and they are at 30th. That 20-yard difference is a good for three spots. Per game average, we're at 78.6. They're at 76.1. We are currently 30th in the league. They are currently dead last. Points, we have 138 on the season. They have 119. 
We are currently 27th in the league, 25th after ties. They are dead last at 32nd or 29th with ties. So as you can see, all of these categories, we do have an edge over them. And that would lend to some, you know, but again, that's why I'm saying though, like that's the thing. The edge is not that much different when it comes to these league standings, bro. But if we end up not, if we end up having Brissett, if it ends up being Brissett versus Tyrod Taylor, oh, sweet Jesus, bro. Like, our offense is going to take a step backwards. Theirs could take a step forward, and that could be a fucking resulting win for the Texans. Like, uh, especially because as we continue to go through this, a lot of categories, they or some categories, they do beat us on defense. Anyway. Points per game, we're at 17.3. They're at 14.9. That has us at 29th or 27th with ties, and they are 32nd or 30th with ties. So again, slight edge there. Defensively, we're giving up 406.9 yards per game, which is 31st. They're giving up 401.4, which is 29th. So they do actually have a slight edge on us there defensively. Passing yards, we're giving up 303.8, which is 31st. They're giving up 266.3, which is 17th. So they obviously have a pretty big advantage there. Their passing defense has been a lot better than ours. We've surrendered a lot more yards in that regard. But there is actually a little bit of a flip when it comes to the running game. We're giving up 115.8, which is currently good for 18th. So right around where their passing yards is. And then they're the same place that our passing yards is for their running at 148.1, which is 31st. So it's a bit of a flip there. So, you know, it kind of they kind of negate each other or whatever. And then when it comes to points, we're giving up 29.1. They're giving up 30.1. So obviously the difference of literally a single point. So we're about even there. That's good for 29th, 25th after ties and 30th or 26th after ties. So, you know, obviously we're basically even. So that kind of, you know, that kind of balances out again too. Okay, now let's take a look at takeaways. We have nine, they have nine. So we're even there. We're currently 15th in the league or sixth with ties. Uh, that actually should be sixth. I needed to change that because we're, we're tied. So we have the same amount, but they are 18th. Obviously, because that's just where, you know, each of our teams falls on the list. But we're, t we're both tied for sixth in the league with nine takeaways on the season. But when it comes to interceptions, we have three on the season, which is 27th or eighth with ties. They have seven, so they're actually a bit better than us. Uh, in the interception category, they're 12th or fourth with ties. When it comes to fumbles, we, we have the edge there. Again, there's a bit of a flip-flop. So defensively, we're pretty even when it comes to overall stacking up. Overall, but they do have uh, a slight edge when we get down here, which is an important category. But anyway, we have six fumbles. That's good for fourth, fourth with, after ties. They have two, which is 31st in the league or eighth after ties. When it comes to sacks, we have 12, which is 29th or 12th with ties. They have the edge there with 15 sacks on the season, 24th or 10th with ties. When it comes to passes defensed, we have the edge there. We have 40, which is third or, or excuse me, second or second with ties. And then they have 29, which is 24th or 11th after ties. So as you can see, again, you know, we win in sacks, they win in passes defensed. We win in fumbles, they win in interceptions, we're tied in takeaways, right? They win in overall yards uh, and passing yards per game, but we win in rushing yards and just barely, you know, points per game, uh, but it's basically even. But then third down defense, we're giving up 50.9%, which is 31st in the league. They're giving up 41.4% currently, which is 19th in the league. So they have a, a sizable edge over us in that category. So this is going to be, a, it's going to be a rough game, dude. I think it's going to be a rough game. Um, especially if Tua doesn't play and we see Brissett against Tyrod Taylor. Um, okay, so anyways, 
Uh, let's take a look at this, though, because as I always do, I do a little bit of a head-to-head a, a -head matchup and how we, on the left, this is how we performed in our previous game. And this is how they performed in their previous game. Now, obviously, we played the Bills, so a really tough team. They also played a really tough team. They played the Rams, the Los Angeles Rams. So how did we do versus how did they do? Well, we scored 11 points against the Bills. They scored 22. So obviously against the Rams. So obviously they win there. We had 262 total yards. They had 323. They get the edge. We had 194 passing yards. They had 279. They have the edge. We had 68 rushing yards. They had 44. We have a slight edge there, so we win that category. But they beat us in yards per play, our 4.1 to their 5.6. They beat us in fumbles because we had one they didn't, and the overall turnover margin because they obviously had less turnovers than we did. But they, each team did throw an interception, two or through one. Davis Mills threw one as well. They beat us in third downs, though, even though they weren't very good at 33%. They still beat us at 28%. We do win the time of possession battle, though, with 29-13 to their 26-25. And we lose in the penalties battle, our 9 to their 6. So if you were to take, if this ended up being the fucking, you know, if this would, obviously, if, if the game on Sunday plays out like this, they obviously would win the game. Um, so hopefully it doesn't play out like that, right? Like, he, um, it's, it just, it's so, it's so sad that we can't feel confident in our Dolphins to even play, you know, a good game against a bad team. Anyway, let's take a look at this. I did put Tyrod Taylor in here because he is expected to start. Now, obviously Tua missed a few games as well, three because he was on IR and then, you know, pretty much the Bills game the first time around because he got knocked out super early, early, although that game does still count because it does still count in his stat line. So you can't remove that. But Tyrod Taylor has obviously played less games, so keep that in mind. But let's see how they stack up. Tua on the season is thrown for 65.6% .6 completion percentage, 1,040 yards, seven touchdowns to five interceptions with an 85.9 passer rating. Tyrod Taylor beats him in completion percentage at 70.5, obviously though has less yards with 416, having played many less games. He only played in the first two games of the season and has been out since then. Does have less touchdowns, obviously, uh, because of that as well at three, but has the overall better touchdown to, to interception ratio since he has zero interceptions, less there as well than Tua, and currently a better passer rating at 122.9. I actually think Tyrod Taylor playing is a bad thing for the Dolphins, if I'm being completely honest, because he's a veteran. I think he's more mobile and athletic than... Um, uh, Davis Mills, and I think he probably actually takes care of the ball better than Davis Mills will. So, you know, it, um, I, I think it's I think it's bad news for the Dolphins that Tyrod Taylor is playing. And if Tua is not going to be playing, if it ends up being Jacoby Brissett, maybe I should have even put Jacoby Brissett in here just to have to see his current you know uh, shit for the year. Um, just in case, but if Jacoby Brissett ends up playing and it's Brissett versus Taylor, I, I, I just, I gotta say, bro, I think in that case, I think in that case, the tight or the Texans end up winning. Um, I think if Tua, if Tua does play, I mean, it's Tyrod Taylor no matter what, that's for sure. But if Tua does play, then I think we still have a chance. And that's what I'm going to go with. And that's how I'm going to do my prediction. Um, but let's just say that if Tua doesn't play and it ends up being Brissett, then it could end up being flipped. When I do my score prediction, it could end up being flipped. So uh, let's see. Keys to victory. So I know this seems kind of silly, 
Obviously, number three remains on the list because, again, until they prove they can clean the, the mistakes, penalties, and turnovers up, it's got to remain on the list. It's been a problem all year. It's been a problem no matter who is in at quarterback, etc., right? So that one obviously stays. But I know the first two seem a little silly. Gashed them in the run. Gashed them in the pass. But at the end of the day, especially if two is on the field, they should be able to theoretically do that. They should be because this Texans team is not very good. We already ran through it, you know, in the league standings uh, and their record, etc., etc. And so, you know, we should just be able to fucking rip them apart, especially again if two is in the game. So, you know, um, if he's not in the game, then like I said, I mean, I feel less confident about that. But it's really that easy, bro. Just fucking I mean, and I put run first because they definitely need to start with that. They need to, and, and they need to commit to the run more. They need to give, you know, Gaskin and Ahmed their opportunities, etc. By the way, just to throw this in there, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. has been released by the Browns. Uh, he had requested to be released. They granted it, whatever. So he's on the waiver wire, and there is some talk that the Dolphins maybe could or should pick him up. We're obviously like second or third in the waiver wire order right now because of our positioning uh, standings wise. Um, so, you know, like the only the Lions or possibly Texans would be ahead of us. It's obviously not going to matter for this game at all. Um, but just wanted to throw that in there before I forgot about it. Uh, anyway, all right, let me finish up here. So defensively, they need to get pressure on Taylor and prevent him from scrambling. So keep him in the pocket, you know, for the most part and get, apply pressure to him, man. I mean, we've had decent pressure, you know, we're, we're decent in pressure and, you know, kind of getting back there a little bit, but they just, our defense has really not been able to finish and really, you know, take it home, get sacks and or create, you know, game changing plays because of the pressure. Um, and then number two is play sound football because, again, honestly, at the end of the day, now I personally think that Tyrod Taylor, even though he's been out and he's probably a bit rusty, I think he actually gives them a much better chance to win because of his veteran experience. Because, of, I mean, he's going to be fresh too, right? Like he's he hasn't played in fucking like five or six weeks, whatever it is. So he's going to be fresh. He's also, you know, like I said, I think better at, at protecting the football. He's better with his legs and his mobility. So, you know, um, they just got to play f sound football, though, right? Like no mistakes, contain contain him to the pocket, set the edge, whatever. Play, you know, it just play good. Like the run defense has actually been better the past couple weeks. So keep that trend going, right? And then win turnover battle, get some turnovers. Like it's just basics, bro. It's just basics because it's a bad team. It's not a good team. And we just need to prove that we can succeed at executing the basics. That's across the board. That's not just with the players and, and stuff like that, but it's also with the coaches and everything, right? And so We'll see. Um, so I'm going to, for prediction, I think it is going to be a relatively low scoring game. I don't think it's going to be some crazy shootout or anything. I don't think there's going to be a lot of fireworks in this game. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty close overall. Um, so I am going to go with uh, a 21 to 19 victory for the Dolphins. Uh, 21 to 19 victory for the Dolphins. So let's see, man. Let's see if they can pull it out. I hope so. They better, like I said, if they lose this game, then I just, I, if they find a way to lose this game against the Texans, I just can't feel good about predicting a win going forward. Cause it's just, I mean, that's as bad as it gets, bro. Like, the only team statistically worse than you at that point would be the Lions, and we don't play them, so we wouldn't have a head-to-head -head matchup to see. But at the end of the season, I mean, if we end up losing to the Texans, we could very well go 1-16. And the Lions, as long as they won two games on the season, would be enough to fucking, 
and they seem to be playing a lot harder and stuff so anyway that's how i'm going to wrap it up make sure you check out the rave on sports app the new fan driven app for all of your sports mlb nba nfl college football all of that fan-driven sports app that's looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverage, live chats with other fans and content creators like myself. Look in the description box for the links for that. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. Of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.